today's show video, I'm going to show you how to work out one of the quantities or the total in a ratio when you're given the other quantity. Well, maybe that sounds a bit confusing, so I better show you in an example. Here we've got Sally and Isabel and they're sharing sweets in the ratio 5 to 3. Remember, the order their names are written in is important. Because Sally is written first here, this number refers to Sally. And this just means that Sally receives five parts worth of the overall sweets. And because Isabel is written second, that means the second number in the ratio refers to Isabel. So Isabel receives three parts worth of the sweets. And we know that, that Sally receives 40 sweets altogether. And we need to work out how many Isabel gets. So the information is that Sally receives 40. Remember that Sally, if we look at the ratio, is five parts, okay? That's how many parts she gets. So that 40 sweets here must be equal to five parts. Well, in order to work out how many sweets Isabel gets, remember Isabel is three here. We need to work out what three parts are. Well, it's a bit awkward going from five parts to three parts. We need to work out the value of one part before we can find three parts. So that's the first step. You need to work out what one part is equivalent to. How many sweets is one part? So if you've got five parts and you need to work out one part, you just need to divide by five because five divided by five gives you one. So we need to divide that number 40 by five. So 40 divided by five is eight. So we know that one part is equal to eight sweets. So now we can work out how many sweets Isabel gets. So Isabel is three parts. So we just need to multiply that one part by three in order to find three parts. So if I multiply that number eight by three, I get 24. So that's the answer. So Isabel gets 24 sweets. Okay, so the important thing to remember is the order of their names so you know who gets how many parts. Write down the information that's given in the question and then you need to find out what one part is equal to before you can work out the final question. Okay, on to the next one. question, the ratio of adults to children on a train is 7 to 2. So because adults is written first in the question, we know that this first number in the ratio refers to adults. So it just means there are 7 parts worth of adults in the total number of people. And because children is written second, this number refers to children, which is 2 parts. Now, there are 245 adults on the train. So, if we look back at the ratio, the parts for adults is 7. So we know those 245 adults are equal to 7 parts in this question. Okay, so that's the information we've been given. Our job is to find the total number of people on the train. So, in order to work out the total number of people, we must also work out the total number of parts in the ratio. So here we've got seven parts and here we've got two. So to work out the total number of parts, we just add those together. So seven plus two is nine. So we have nine parts in total in this ratio. So we need to work out what nine parts are equal to. So to work out nine parts, before we can do that, we need to work out what one part is equal to. It's a bit awkward trying to get from seven to nine. We need to work out the value of one part just like in the previous question. So if we've got seven parts and we need to know what one part is equal to, we must divide by seven. Okay, seven divided by seven gives me one. So I must do the same on this side. I must divide that number, 245, by the number seven, which is 35. So one part is equal to 35 people. And remember, the total number of people are nine parts. So we need to now multiply one part by nine because one times nine is nine, which means we multiply 35 by nine as well. So when I multiply 35 by nine, I get 315. Okay, so that's the final answer. 
315 people in total are on the train. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, so here we've got a length of rope which is cut into pieces in the ratio 4 to 5. So this part here must be shorter than this longer part here. So I'm going to call this one S for the shorter part of rope and this bigger number L for the longer part of rope. And it says the shortest piece is 92 centimetres long. Well, if we look at the ratio, the shorter piece is equal to four parts. So I need to put that 92 centimetres equal to four parts. So that's the information that we've been told in the question. Now we have to work out the length of the longest piece of rope. Well, the longer piece, if we look back at the ratio, is five parts. So I need to work out what five parts are in order to work out the length of the longer piece of rope. But before I can do that, just like in the previous two examples, I need to work out the value of one part. So if I've got four parts and I want to know the value of one part, I must divide by four because four divided by four is one. So I must divide this number 92 by four as well. So if I divide that by four, I get 23 centimeters. So now we know the value of one part on this rope, 23 centimeters. So we can do that last step to work out the longer piece, which was five parts. So if we've got one part and we need to work out five parts, we just multiply by five because one times five is five. So I must do the same with this length here. So I multiply the number 23 by five as well, which gives me 115 centimeters. So there we go. There's the length of the longer piece of rope. Okay, one more question to finish. Okay, on to the final question. So a bag contains red and blue marbles. The ratio of red marbles to blue marbles is three to two. So because red marbles comes first, we know that red marbles must be the first number in the ratio. So red marbles take up three parts of the total. And so blue marbles must be second. So blue marbles take up two parts of the total. There are 51 red marbles. So we're interested in the red marbles. When I look at the ratio, red marbles take up three parts. So I need to put that number 51 equal to three parts. So that's the information that we've been told in the question. Now, we have to work out the total number of marbles. So this is like that second example I did earlier. You have to work out the total. So in order to do that, you need to first work out the total number of parts in the ratio. So here I've got three parts, here I've got two. If I add those numbers together, three plus two is five, that tells me the total number of parts in the ratio. So that's what we need to work out in order to find the total number of marbles. So I need to work out what five parts are. So before I can do that, just like in all the other examples, I need to work out the value of one part. So if I've got three parts and I want to work out what one part is, I must divide by three because three divided by three is one. So I must do the same with that number 51 and I have to divide that number 51 by three as well, which gives me 17. So that just means one part out of those five total parts is equal to 17 marbles. So now I can do that final step. I can work out the value of those five parts. If I've got one part and I need to work out five, I just multiply by five because one times five is five. And so I do the same with that number 17. I have to multiply 17 by five as well, which gives me 85. So we've done it. 85 is the total number of marbles in the bag. So I hope that's clear, those ratio examples I've done today. I do have some other videos on simplifying ratios and other types of questions that you might get asked. So you might want to have a look at those as well. So that's all from me for today and goodbye.